to our problem. Government is the problem. Do you want the whole truth? I don't think you're ready. Governments don't control things. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. It's Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Welcome back, everybody. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. We are just blessed to have the news team that we do. I know Chris is a friend of mine. I know that he comes on and does beat the press every Friday in the first segment on Friday's show. But when I have him put together, or he's anchoring the newscast as he just did, taking the press conference today, bringing in the experts of Pete Sepp and Dan Holler, I just so well done. Bravo. As somebody who consumes news, not talk radio and not necessarily opinion shows, because I don't want to, I don't listen to other people. Okay, it's just not my gig. My gig is doing nothing but truth, and it's got to be somewhat organic in that way. And so I hear newscasts a lot. And that was really well done. Really well done. And the entire news team there, I just really blessed to be a part of the team here at American Family Radio. Chad Groening, Ned Smith, Charlie Butts, Jody Brown, Fred Jackson, just doing a good good job. And you're getting the news through a Christian worldview. And that's that's rare. <laughs> yeah. Fairly, fairly, is it fairly rare? Easy. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. Now you, we're going to do the press conference. But before we get to the press conference, Megan Kelly, she had Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel, one of the architects of Obamacare, on last night. This is what has happened. When people are having a political discussion, a political debate, you're about to hear Ezekiel Emanuel blame Fox News for the failure of Obamacare. There's no other word but pathetic. Roll it. I know you are loyal to the president, but it, it's... I, and I don't want to criticize him, but the, I don't understand why you can't just tell it to a straight. Should he have yeah. seen this? Why? I, my, my, I'm trying what, to get to, why didn't they listen to you? Why wasn't there such a person appointed? There were, there were differences about how they wanted to run it, and they decided to run it uh, with uh, people in uh, CMS having uh, the charge for doing it. Remember, this was not an environment which was hospitable to setting up uh, the exchanges. I, I know. I, you I, there was a lot you of and your colleagues were constantly criticizing, trying to underfund it you know and what, trying sir? to make a sure it didn't work. A lot of that criticism proved true. A lot of that criticism proved true, unfortunately. It's a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. We're going to try to do everything we can to make it fail, and then when it fails, we're going to say, oh, why did it fail? What? I, I don't, well, I don't think Fox News had anything to do with the roll out of healthcare.gov. As far as I know, we didn't touch that website. But listen, I want you to talk are, to you, you about were this. Constantly, All right, it you was were our constantly fault. attacking the law and you okay. were trying to make it underfunded. It was, all, it was all our fault. Okay. Let me ask you about healthcare.gov. Now, Ed Schultz, last night I played the Ed Schultz thing, and I laughed at Ed Schultz. This is sad, but it's a true indictment of failure. Of the people that said we are going to redesign, we're going to recraft, even though 85% of the people are satisfied with their health insurance, 85% we're going to come in and reshape it. We've never really had experience doing this. We don't have any business experience. The buck really never stops any place in politics. We know that, and I mean that for both parties, quite frankly. But that's what happened. And now all of this has come due, and now people are saying, I love how the debate gets shipped. Are we being too hard? Maybe it's unfair. Oh, the system was bad before. It was terrible. The individual market was terrible. It's only 2% of the people. The, the rationalization and excuses. When you have this, if your kids come home and they start pulling this nonsense with it's not their fault that they're not doing well in school and you know they haven't studied. What do you do? It's 
not a direct analogy. Maybe these people studied, but they certainly weren't prepared. And by the way, there's no other word for it. They've lied to us the entire time. They lied to us, knowingly misled the American people. Now, I could talk about Benghazi, I could talk about uh, the IRS, and I can also talk about the misleading comments and statements made there, and it's outrageous right now just for this segment, right here and now, focusing solely on Obamacare and what has happened when it has been exposed to be what it is, a failure. And so what do you get? You get promises and you get excuses. President Obama started off commenting in today's press conference about the storm in the Philippines, which is great. That's fine. Get it. Absolutely. Responsible thing to do. Then he went to the fix and the sort of apology and where this was an attempt to, I think, stop the bleeding of the failed lie campaign and the failed revision on the lie campaign. It's the acknowledgement. But even still, he's going to point out successes before he gets to the fix. Roll it. Uh, yesterday, uh, the White House announced that in the first month, more than 100,000 Americans successfully enrolled in new insurance plans. Uh, is that as high a number as we'd like? Uh, absolutely not. But it does mean that people want affordable health care. Uh, the problems of the website have prevented too many Americans from completing the enrollment process, and that's on us, not on them. Uh, but there's no question that there's real demand for quality, affordable health insurance. Uh, in the first month, nearly a million people successfully completed an application for themselves or their families. Uh, those applications represent more than 1.5 million people. Of those 1.5 million people, uh, 106,000 of them have successfully signed up to get covered. Uh, another 396,000 uh, have the ability to gain access to Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act. Uh, that's been less reported on, but it shouldn't be. We reported that. That's 80% of your goal. Actually, 500,000 was your goal. 80% of them qualified for Medicaid, which we see the trend going up into a program that is not solvent <laughs> long term, to say the least. That's, I mean, think about that in a program that's ridiculed by doctors that people say, no, I don't take Medicaid patients, up to 30 to 40 percent in certain states. It, this is, he's trying to say, yeah, there's demand. Does he not know that it's the law? Did I miss something there? It's the law. <laughs> they have to. There's demand. You made the demand that you changed everything. They're getting letters. Oh, they need it. What? Again, the word comes to mind, pathetic, sad. By the way, they reached 20% of their actual goal of 500,000. Just, just be clear on that. 20%. So if you get a 20 on a test last night, we talked about it. I'll say it again. And the team agrees. We all agree. That's a big f -a You flagged it. Why do you have to? Uh, you just want it to fail. Don't, don't, don't. Okay, because the grown-ups are in the room, and it's a buffet. You can take it or leave it. And I know I'm a disciple in progress, but look, at some point, there's got to be accountability and people coming in going, this isn't really political. This is a ripping failure. This is awful. This is just, I can't believe this man is president. And you say, Crane, that's a really harsh indictment. Well, I, there's a reason for it. Oh, yeah, he said he was going to fix what went wrong with the grandfathered in policies that he knew about and he knew that he was knowingly misleading the American people on when they said they could keep their health insurance. And then remember, you know that he knew about it because he goes, it's only about 2%. Only, you know, only million, 2 million people? No, 5 million people have lost their health insurance, gotten the letters. And it's up to 14 million people when we're talking about they quote two percent that are impacted by this. We do know it's far greater. It's forty anywhere from forty-five million to ninety-three million. Ovik Roy has the numbers overall, and I'm including the people 
that are going to be losing it through their employer. That said, here's the president with his big fix. Do you think he missed a few classes in what the Article I powers were of Congress? Roll it. Uh, already, people who have plans that predate the Affordable Care Act can keep those plans if uh, they haven't changed. That was already in the law. That's what's called a grandfather clause that was included in the law. Today, we're going to extend that principle both to people whose plans have changed since the law took effect and to people who bought plans since the law took effect. So state insurance commissioners still have the power to decide what plans can and can't be sold in their states, but the bottom line is insurers can extend current plans that would otherwise be canceled into 2014, and Americans whose plans have been canceled can choose to re-enroll in the same kind of plan. Uh, we're also requiring insurers to extend current plans to inform their customers about two things. One, that protections, uh, what protections these renewed plans don't include. Number two, that the marketplace offers new options with better coverage and tax credits that might help you bring down the cost. So, if you received one of these letters, I'd encourage you to take a look at the marketplace. Even if the website isn't working as smoothly as it should be for everybody yet, the plan comparison tool that lets you browse costs for new plans near you is working just fine. Now, this fix won't solve every problem for every person, but it's going to help a lot of people. Uh, doing more will require work with Congress. And I've said from the beginning, I'm willing to work with Democrats and Republicans to fix problems as they arise. This is an example of what I was talking about. We can always make this law work better. Okay, now this is, business owners, you'll get this. This is when the, with respect to people in academia, the academic comes in and tells you how to run your business. Maybe uses the widget analogy of what do you sell widgets? Okay, I, I'm thinking of a movie of back to school, but not advising that. He, he just thinks he can come in. I'm, we're going to require companies to do this. Well, insurers are not on board. Okay, that's, I mean, this is wrong in so many respects. I, again, Article One Constitution, but legislative powers are vested in Congress. Legislation, you have to execute what is legislated. That's two powers. Doesn't take a rip in Einstein, but a constitutional scholar, professor, yeah. It's not a jab. That's just a reality. You got to sit there and go, what? Is he really saying, yeah, we're going to tell insurance companies to bring back these plans they've canceled already, and we're not going to take in mind that they've done this because... They now recognize it's the law to buy insurance. They've got to provide all of these bells and whistles to everybody, and they can not weigh in the cost analysis when it comes to the risk with people. We can't, we can't do that anymore. No. Everybody's the same. And so no matter how sick or well you are, now you think, well, wait a second, but that goes in, into the cost of what your insurance will be. As unpleasant as that is, things are never free. But the goal here is keep your eye on the ball. This is about saying, now, here you go. Insurance company, I've got a big bag of bunny stew. It's a bag? Well, it's a little kettle bag. You know, it's one of those where you go to the bread co. <laughs> you ever have the, they have the, I think they open the soup that way through bags. Brent, you've been to bread co. Back me up on this. I, Sandwich shops sometimes put soup in bags. You've seen that. Well, the, you picture that kind of bag, and it's a big thing of bunny stew. And here's what he did. He he, he took it and he said, "Ah, oh, it's spilling. It's getting all over me." Oh no! Insurance companies, ah, catch, catch. They're not picking it up. They're not taking it because he actually made the stew. Truth. He did the stew. They, they, they had to work in the kitchen. They had to serve it, but he made the stew. He's the chef. And 
they're not playing ball because they say we can't do that. Now the state regulators is and the state insurance commissioners are sitting there going, wait a second, is this even legal? In fact, and I got to thank Brent for this one. Howard Dean, Dr. Howard Dean was asked about what the president had just said regarding the change and the fix and the administrative action that he's looking to do. And here's what he had to say. Roll it. Um, Governor Dean, uh, President Obama, very contrite. I'm going to keep it very short because I want these guys to jump in. I talk forever about health care. Um, I, I, a, I wonder if he has the legal authority to do this since this was a congressional bill that set this up. And B, I stick to what I said before the president came on, which is if you want to make this work, you got to get people in the system and the website's not going to work evidently for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the question. It's illegal. Now, there are bills, the Fred Upton bill, uh, Upton bill, Representative Upton from Michigan, as well as Johnson's bill. We talked about that last night. We were covering that out of the gate last night about the legal remedies before the president's conference because some of the things that were being done, and ask Hans von Spakovsky about that. And we look at when you have a law, the way to deal with that law is not the fact of, oh, I will pick and choose. No, it's actually to go through the legislative process. But that's tough. That's hard. you got to get people on board on that. Yeah. you got to convince the American people you're right. That's why when you bring up legislation, oftentimes it's been agreed upon in general in the spirit of the legislation, the major components of it, and then you pass it. You, then Congress gets together and says, hey, I'm going to run on this. This is what I'm going to do. When you can't get a single Republican on board, you say you want to work with them, but basically you give them the Heisman and the number one from the middle and say, hey, hey, guess what? I won. And shove it down the American people's throats through a parliamentary procedure. It's been used on both sides. But by the way, this reshapes one sixth of the economy. Hey, it's all come and do now. Hear my heart. It's not about President Obama being a Democrat. It's not about President Obama being a liberal. It's about the policy being an absolute failure and the administration worrying more about his legacy. And that exists, by the way, in politics, and it has existed through, we look at presidents, R's, D's alike. I get it, legacy. But he's more worried about his legacy than acknowledging the failure of what's destroying people's health care coverage and destroying our economy. Very destructive uh, impact of the entire law. He's more worried about his legacy. Well, Crane, that, yeah, you're going to his motive. I mean, that's conjecture. You're right, it is. But why else would you try to say you didn't say something by revising it? Well, Crane, of course I would say that because the mainstream media I've had in my pocket, and they pretty much carry me through everything. Look at Benghazi. Look at the IRS scandal. Any Republican would have been impeached by now. But hey, hey, I'm a Democrat. I'm a lefty. I'm a left winger. I'm further to the left than Hillary could ever be. And they love me, so I'll get by with it. And he's saying, wait a second. No, no. And by the way, the emperor is has no clothes. Because you think this man's a leader? Tell me business, men and women, parents, tell me, is this man a leader? I have to get to Major Garrett now. Major Garrett, I could do the fumbled and blame, but I want to go to Major Garrett who asked him flat out, when did he know about these things? He asked the first question, and here it is. That's a long question. But in essence, first question is, do you not believe, sir, the American people deserve a deeper, more transparent accountability? And I'm only reading part of the question from you as to why you said over and over when your own statistics published in the Federal Register alerted you to your, pol your policy staff, and I presume to you, to the fact that millions of Americans would, in fact, probably fall into the very gap you're trying to administratively fix now? That's one question. And that's regarding the 
website, or excuse me, and then the second question is regarding the website. You were informed, or several other people in this building were informed two weeks before the launch of the website that it was failing the most basic tests internally. And yet the decision was made to launch the website on October 1st. Did you, sir, make the test? And if so, did you regret that? So he asked, did you make that test? Did you, did you, it was failing. Did you know? Here is the president's response. Roll it. Okay. On, on the website, I was not informed directly that the website would not be working as the way it was supposed to. Had I been informed, I wouldn't be going out saying, boy, this is going to be great. Um, you know, I'm accused of a lot of things, but uh, I don't think I'm stupid enough to go around saying this is going to be like uh, shopping on Amazon or Travelocity uh, a week before the website opens if I thought that it wasn't going to work. So clearly, we and I did not have enough awareness about the problems in the website. Even a week into it, the thinking was that they were, these were some glitches that would be fixed with patches as opposed to uh, some broader systemic problems that took much longer to fix uh, and we're still working on them. So um, yeah, that doesn't excuse the fact that they just don't work. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that uh, no, Garrett uh, Major, we, we would not have rolled out something knowing very well that it wasn't going to work the way it was supposed to, uh, given all the scrutiny that we knew was going to be on, uh, on the website. You didn't know? Let that sink in for a second. The president's saying he didn't know. He didn't know officially. Well, that's plausible deniability. It's the idea of that. I, really? This is why I've called him a liar. It's one who lies. This is why you don't look at it through a partisan lens. You look at it through what has happened. We've had liberal policies passed for the last five years, and they're absolute failures. So maybe Charles Krauthammer is right. Maybe this is will be the death of liberalism. Maybe this generation will realize, no, hey, when somebody starts talking like this, they start bringing up history to answer them and saying, no, 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 we've tried that. Now, you can go to a state and try that, but I wonder if California will still be there. <laughs> hey, everybody. A lot more to cover, but we will have our opportunity tomorrow night. Till then, live with honor in your life, compassion in your heart. Always keep the faith in Jesus Christ. God knows you, loves you, he created you, and you're worth it. Please go to the Facebook page and like the page. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, AFR Talk.